Hello, children. Today, we are going to learn a different poem. A poem which is creating a fear in you. So when we watch movies, there are different kinds of genres of movies we watch, right? Thriller, horror, comedy, entertainer. So this poem belongs in the category of a horror. It is creating a fear in your mind when you read the poem. In this poem, the poet is thinking and writing about the aspects which we hardly dare to do, right? It's like thinking about the spirits, the ghost. Though it, all these images come to our mind, we acknowledge and you know forget about it. We do not think about it. What would have forced the poet to write this poem? I was asking myself, why did the poet write about this poem? We hardly think about our ancestors because we are so busy in our own lives. But the poet is having a different point of view. He is talking about haunted houses. So when the word haunted comes to your mind, you know that this is a place abandoned by people. Haunted houses are abandoned or rundown houses, which is not used by any, right? These are the images and it is kind of a scary, spooky feeling. We generally won't think about. But the poet has thought about it and what do you think was the mindset of the poet when he has written this poem? So he would have thought about the ancestors and he would have uh, thought what they will be thinking if at all there is a spirit. So we have to approach the poem from a different perspective. We are going to talk a lot about the spirits and ghosts in this poem, which we generally won't do, right? Because we are all leading our own busy lives. Hardly we get a time to think about what will happen after death or you know what ha would have happened to people who have uh, died. So these are the areas generally we won't allow uh, all this thinking to come to our mind. If at all it comes, we will divert it with some pleasant uh, you know, thinking so that we can have a peaceful life. Now, this poem is written by Henry Wordsworth Longfellow and the title of the poem, as you see, it's a haunted house. You can see a dilapidated house over there. Generally, we won't go to abandoned houses. Now, let us talk about the biography of the author. Henry Wordsworth Longfellow was a famous American poet he was born in Maine and he went to Bowdoin College. He became a professor at Harvard, but he felt that teaching was a hindrance to his writing. And so he uh, retired from his profession and decided to take up full-time writing. Now we shall enter into the poem. I shall read line by line and paraphrase it. We have to... Um, cover the um, uh, literary devices, rhyme scheme, theme of the poem, tone of the poem, and summary of the poem, apart from the paraphrase. So that is what we are going to cover in this explanation. So let us dive into the poem directly. All houses wherein men have lived and died are haunted houses. Through the open doors, the harmless phantoms on their errands glide. With the feet that make no sound upon the floors. So there is a technique to read the poem as well. All poems cannot be read in the same way. You have to have the voice modulation, right? So here I am trying, just trying to bring a tinge of fear or a tinge of um, uh, what do you call that? Uh, um, create. I am trying to create a fear in my voice so that we can enjoy the poem, okay? So all houses wherein men have lived and died are haunted houses. Through the open doors, 
the harmless phantoms on their errands glide with a feet that make no sound upon the floor the poet is having a different perspective in this poem i have told you ahead now he is telling that you don't need to have an abandoned house to be a haunted house not necessarily that uh you know the house is to be called haunted should be abandoned or run down it can be a house or he is telling that all houses are haunted even the houses we live in are haunted why because our ancestors would have lived there they would have died they would have been buried so these they their spirits often come and visit us so it is kind of a scary feeling isn't it it is scary for me so he is telling the poet is telling that our houses are frequented by the spirit or the ghost that is why in the beginning itself i told you this is kind of a, a strange poem and he is talking mostly about the spirits and ghosts now according to the poet he is telling that all houses are haunted where men have lived and died and where are when are they coming or how are they coming through the open doors the harmless phantoms now this is good because they are harmless phantoms means the ghosts or the spirits on their short on their errands glide they are gliding or breezing coming through in their short visit they are coming in their short visits and they are gliding through and there is no sound their feet that make no sound at all now where are uh, where can they be seen we meet them at the doorway on the stair along the passages they come and go impalpable impressions on the air a sense of something moving to and fro he is telling that their presence is impalpable that means not noticeable insensible palpable means noticeable impalpable insensible or unnoticeable we cannot even feel their presence we are feeling the air it is just as easy as that just like air they are present now moving forward here are more guests at table than the host invited the illuminated hall thronged with quiet inoffensive ghosts so the poet is telling that there are more number of guests i can see than the host invited who are they they are the inoffensive ghosts they are silently sitting there they do not have any offense because the peep, the host has invited many they are uninvited they do not have any offense they all are sitting in the highly lit hall illuminated means well lit well lit hall they are sitting they are uninvited yet there is no offense for them and they all are sitting at the table and there is a beautiful comparison here how are they sitting as silent as the pictures on the wall the picture cannot talk so they are as good as the picture on the wall they are sitting very silently they are very inoffensive now the stranger at my fireside cannot see the forms i see nor hear the sounds i hear he but perceives what is while unto me all that has been is visible and clear so here we have to believe that the speaker himself is a ghost as he is telling that i am able to see all these guests those who are uninvited but the person who is sitting at the fireplace he is unable to see what i see or what i hear he is just perceiving what it is in front of his eyes but i am able to see more than what he does so what is the meaning over here the speaker himself is also a ghost so he is also a ghost that is why he is able to see more number of people who are inoffensive and they are silently sitting there he is able to listen to them or see them whereas the living people are unable to see is that scary for you 
yeah when we sit alone probably it is kind of scary that is why we generally avoid these kinds of you know reading now we have no title deeds to house or lands owners and occupants of earlier days from graves forgotten rest their dusty hands and hold in more mot made till their old estate so here they are telling this particular word is also forcing me to think that the speaker is a ghost he is telling we have no title deeds so he is one among them we have no title deeds to house or lands what do you mean by title deeds the ownership so they do not have their name in the title deeds owners and occupants of earlier days they used to possess all these lands and the houses once upon a time not any more where are they now they are in the graves forgotten so the descendants would have forgotten these ancestors because it it's nobody's fault right because we just go through the flow of our life we cannot remember our ancestors all the while right we have to move on in our lives we will also be forgotten by the next generation so that is the law of life you know we cannot change it now he is telling that we are forgotten we are in the graves and we stretch out their you know they stretch their dusty hands so this is also a metaphor they stretch their dusty hands and hold the mot main the possession with their old estate so they still have lot of connection they don't want to give away they are mentally so connected with the possessions once they used to have so that connect is still very much strong even though they are buried under the ground the spirit world around this world of sense floats like an atmosphere and everywhere so he's telling that where do the spirit world exist the spirit world is around the world of sense so the world where we are living around us just like an atmosphere vast through these earthly mist and vapors dense so we are having mist and vapor in the atmosphere so their world or their spirit is just wafting through that means just breezing through a vital breath of more ethereal air so that is a very a clear breath that is coming through the heavenly air our little lives are kept in equipoise by opposite attractions and desires the struggle of the instinct that enjoys and the more noble instinct that aspires he is telling that our lives are uh, having the force of balance equipoise means the balance so our lives are having a force of balance opposite sides attract that is the rule that is the law the struggle of the instinct that enjoys so those who are having an instinct to struggle they enjoy the life and the more noble instinct whoever is having the noble instincts they will aspire in their life these perturbations this perpetual jar of earthly wants and aspirations high come from the influence of an unseen star and undiscovered planet in our sky so we do there is a uh, metaphor over there this is a symbolism actually a per, this perpetual jar unending jar of that anxieties and needs and wants so he is imagining a symbolism that there is a jar which is filled with anxieties and you know needs and wants our aspirations our desires it's like a jar so that is a symbolism and these are uh, these influence or these come from the influence of the star which are yet not discovered and the moon from the some dark gate of and as the moon from some dark gate of cloud throws over the sea a floating bridge of light across those trembling planks our fancies crowd into the realm of mystery and night so here the poet is telling that he is comparing the clouds with a dark gate it is opening at night the dark clouds are opened and we can see the moon 
and the moonlight is slowly striding down. It's a streak of light. We can see the beam of moonlight. The poet is comparing that with a bridge. He is telling that a bridge of light is coming. It's just like plank of fancies. Okay, our fancies crowd. That means we become very thoughtful into the realm of mystery and night. So night is a kingdom of mystery. There are so many unexplained uh, things happening. When you look at the star and the skies, there are so much of mystery involved in that. So this is the kingdom of mystery and night. So from the world of spirits, there descends a bridge of light connecting it with us. The poet is telling that the bridge that is nothing but the moonlight is bringing or the, uh, the spirits are descending or coming down and getting connected with our thoughts over whose unsteady flow that sways and bends. So whoever is having unsteady flow, the poet probably means that those who are, or the houses which are not used, that sways and bends, the spirits come and stay there, wander our thoughts above the dark abyss. So in the dark hall of the night, our thoughts are getting connected with our uh, the spirits of our ancestors. So this is the poem. It is a um, beautiful poem written um, by W.H. Longfellow. We have to see that from his perspective. So he wants to believe that there are spirits and spirit exist. So I will not say anything about that particular topic. It is the discretion of, you know, it is individual discretion. Now, here are the meanings of words, impalpable, mod main, ethereal, equipos, perturbations, perpetual, aspirations. As I'm going to share this PPT with you, you can learn all these meanings. And literary devices, example for metaphor, simile, imageries, and symbolism. These are the devices which the poets use to make the poem very uh, beautiful and rich in its presentation. So imageries are very, very important. And that has to be read with a lot of voice modulation so that you are able to visualize it. Now, what is the tone of the speaker's, uh, what is the speaker's tone? The speaker's tone is a bit creepy. What do you mean by creepy? That means creating some fear in your mind. We usually say spooky place, right? We, those places which are unused by many are kind of spooky to get in. The words spoken slowly and with emphasis. He does this to enhance the imagination. As I told you, it all depends upon the way you read a poem. So if you, you have to uh, create a fear by Changing the voice when you read a poem. Enhance the imagination and to add effect to the, his, his words. Now, the theme of the poem is ghosts. And the author is saying that ghosts are real and they do exist. Okay, that is the theme of the poem. Summary is given. In the beginning of the poem, it says that all houses are haunted. The, how, the ghosts just go about their business and they do not bother anyone. They are very harmless. We only sometimes sense that someone or something else is there. In the middle, the owner does not know who owned the house before. The original owner of the house is still there as well. And the place where he lives overlaps with ours. The spirit world is there on top of us. At the end of this poem, the author says that ghosts come from a different world, the spiritual world, the spirit world, if you will, and they can come and go as they please. But the spirit world is a mystery to us. So I hope you enjoyed the poem and we shall learn in detail and clarify all your doubts in the class. Thank you.